Now, Good Morning Maryland. Welcome back. Whatever you're doing right now, take a look at your TV and look at these pictures because it shows a dog practically starving, tied up at a school playground. And sadly in Baltimore, this is something we see all the time. Now I want you to look at this dog today. We're going to get a shot of him because he's here in our studio. 40 pounds now, but when they found him, he was 23. His new owner is the guy that found him, a state trooper, and he's here this morning. Thank you so much for joining us, along with Deborah from Barks. How are you both? Fine, thank you. All right, well, first let's start with you. Tell me the story. Uh, we were, my team and I worked down in Baltimore City, the Warren Apprehension Task Force, and we were working in southwest Baltimore, and we were in the area of Warwick and Baltimore, West Baltimore Street, and we pulled up at an intersection, and we happened to look over, and my boy, he was tied to a pole. <laughs> What'd you think? Well, at first I thought, man, I looked over, I said, he's starving. And I said, there's nobody around. So I said, we, I said, we have to stop and do something about this. And uh, I went over, and he had a lead that was tied to his neck, and he, was, he couldn't even sit down. So I, I, I took out a knife, I cut the lead, took him over some grass that was in the area, and uh, the rest is what you see here. I mean, Bob, you're, you're a state trooper. You see it all. You're a big, tough guy. You're, you're clearly a little emotional over this. What, what, what is it? Because I'm sure you see tough stuff all the time. I don't know. I, I guess I have a soft spot for animals. So... <laughs> And he's so, he's so happy and healthy right now. He gave him the name Nitro. Pardon the noise. We have a little bit of a camera issue right now going on. Sorry, you named him Nitro. He's being great. And um, how's it going? Because he's in your house now. He's fine. He's, we have a couple other dogs, and he's gotten along with them. I've got a couple cats, and he's doing fine. Um, they, he's already part of the household. Deborah, I noticed mm -hmm. right now you've, you've got tears in your eyes. <laughs> you work at Barks. Uh, city animal shelter you never get to hear happy stories very rarely do we see the happy ending like this I mean it happens but we don't always get to see the follow-up and I, I've seen this from the very beginning with this with um, Nitro because um, what what trooper Bob had, didn't tell you was he was at the shelter before the animal control uh, officer got back with the dog and he was, he was there to tell me he wanted his dog so I, you know, and he also told me that it wasn't going to happen on his watch. So he'd been seeing what was going on in on the news with the um, the dog that had been attacked with the machete and the puppy in Carroll Park, and he just wasn't going to let it happen. So that was just so heartwarming. Um, I mean, when you think about the fact that he was tied up, somebody did that. Somebody left him there, and he was. I mean, clearly he's thin right now, but he was 23 pounds, now he's 40. Were you worried about what was going to happen to him? I was. I mean, you know, he didn't look, he, he wasn't real healthy. You know, and when I got the bark, I told him if he's salvageable, that I, I'd like to take him home. You feel good about what you did? Sure. Excuse me. <laughs> no, I, trust me, I, I, I think you have the biggest heart, and I, I think it's the nicest thing that you did. And it, it's a happy ending, which is mm -hmm. something that we don't hear a lot about with animals in Baltimore City. Well, and this guy, I mean, this, this dog here, you can see he's the sweetest thing in the world. He wouldn't have stood a chance if he had been left tied to the pole there, if somebody had looked the other way, if somebody hadn't helped him. He wouldn't have stood a chance. Well, not everybody is as big-hearted as Trooper Bob, so mm -hmm. what, what, do, what do we need to do? Well, when people see something, when they see an animal that's being neglected or abused, they need to call 311 or 911. If it's, if it's a cruelty action happening right then, they need to call 911. They need to take action and, and not be quiet. If they see a dog that's left in a backyard that is starving, they need to call 311 and report it to animal control and save that animal's life. And it, it's going to take all of us um, doing those things to help change the lives of the animals in our city. You glad you did it? Absolutely. You know, I heard about you at a meeting um, that, with the mayor's task force, and somebody showed me a picture of him sitting in your car. <laughs> <laughs> and you must just be um, very thrilled that this has worked out this way. Absolutely. I mean, there's plenty of good dogs down at the shelter. You know, I saw that firsthand. And, you know, they need to be adopted. Well, you did a great thing. I think, you know, hearing about a starving dog tied up it sort of makes you lose faith in humanity and you restored it for people. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for coming in, Deborah, and all the work that you do. Tell everybody where they can go for this 
mayor's task force meeting that's happening when the public can basically weigh in on this problem of animal abuse in the city. Yes, on June 16th we'll be having um, a meeting, a hearing for the uh, task force, the animal abuse, anti-animal abuse task force, and it'll be at Poly High School and in the auditorium, and it starts at 6 o'clock, and we really hope everyone comes and lets the, uh, the city know that, that we're not going to tolerate this anymore. So we really hope to see you there. Well, thank you both for coming in and bringing Nitro. He's very handsome. <laughs> He's come a long way since these photos. Sure thank has. you, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Cherie, isn't that nice? Oh.